Well, good morning. Luke here with the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, and I'm doing something very different today. We're going bass fishing. All right, let me see if I can do this without stepping on your rods. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, I'm here with Captain George Barton with GMCO Potomac River Guide Service here, and we're gonna go after some largemouth bass. And I've dabbled a little bit with largemouth bass here and there, but I'm, I'm getting someone who really knows their stuff here, so we can actually get some footage of people doing what they should. <laughs> you guys wanna come here on the Potomac River and try doing this? I'll put a link in the description to his website. Take care, Cap. Take care, Bar and Carp. All right, guys, so we've got some good conditions for top water lures today. It's a nice overcast day, so that hot sun isn't driving the fish into the shadows and deeper. We got a little bit of wind, which is rippling the water, which will reduce visibility enough that they can't see us as easily, and that'll help us be uh, a little bit stealthier. And uh, we've got really high water here. This is a tidal river. The tide's really high. We've got a full moon lately. And you can see here, we've got lots and lots of weed beds. There's a couple feet of weeds on the bottom and the fish can hide down in there in little pockets, but there's still a couple feet of water above the weed so we can still fish it. Additionally, we've got lots of lily pads and in some places, the lily pads are actually submerged so you can be pulling open water right on the top of the lily pads and getting the fish to come out up and ambush stuff. So all of those things suggest to us that top water or at least shallow water lures um, are a way to go. So, you know, we'll kind of see. Well, that's what I'm gonna arm you with. All right, look at this. Classic Eagle Claw, the Aristocrat, nice. Yeah, that's an older rod. It's just very durable. The reels I use are the Wright McGill uh, Victory Reels of 3000. Yeah, I don't know Wright McGill. Uh, McGill Wright one. McGill's the parent company of Eagle Claw. Uh, and they were spec'd out by Skeet Reese. A lot of times you become our good fishermen. All right, we got our first hook up here. Hey, come here, buddy. Come here. Right on come top on. water. Oh, yeah, you know how to eat it. Hey, you're healthy. Ah, there we go. All right. Not a full football, but he's like a Nerf football, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty color, though. Yeah, it's a beautiful, healthy fish. Yeah. yeah. Okay, buddy. All right. Thank you, bud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, that's an issue. Just barely put the gammer down from the last one, and bam, he goes and hooks up another one right there off the top water. Here's some day. There you go. Nice little guy. Any top water fish is a good fish. <laughs> Absolutely. So now let's see, you're using, uh, you got a little, I've seen this popper before. What's the name of this popper? That's just a little popper. It's just a little uh, pearl, a little gray black back. You see, it's called a popper? Uh huh. Actually, this is a, probably a rebel. Rebel. This is old school. This is a saltwater lose, Ooh. original lose. It's a old three ball bearing reel that you can throw in a hurricane and won't backlash. And it's a very durable reel since it was built for saltwater. It has gaskets, water doesn't get inside it. That reel right there is probably about a 15 year old reel and I've probably caught a thousand fish with it. <laughs> this is a Wright McGill uh, rod. This yeah. is a, a special rod that Lee McGill that owns Eagle Claw had specked out. It's actually a saltwater uh, inshore rod. It has a real good backbone, but it has a real nice tip. Yeah. So you can throw a small bait like this with it, but you can fight good sized fish with it. All right, I've been throwing this frog a little bit. Not much has happened, and all the action's been on that smaller topwater lure. So we're going to try a little bit different bait and just see what happens. We've got a little bit of a diver. Yeah, it's a baby minus one. Just keep it a nice steady uh, crank on it, nice mm -hmm. steady pace, and you'll feel the thumping on the tip of the rod. Mm -hmm. Just got to giggle to the wiggle. Feel that thumping on it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Let's see a few. Little, little, little guy. Now we've circled back and we're refishing the area we've already fished and still pulling out a fish or two. So, you know, sometimes going over things a little slower and a little more carefully can produce. You're seeing the bait come from a different direction. Either. No, like I said, I mentioned earlier. I'm See, he was catching too many fish, so I put one of his lures in the tree just to just to kind of even the, the playing. Yeah, slow him down. So that's how I roll. I'm a dirty, dirty fisherman. Oh, there 
There you go. Not big, but I ain't skunked either. Yep, yeah, a little minus one. A little fish. That's a good healthy fishery. Oh. <laughs> Quick relief. There Quick we relief. go. Like a pro. Right. <laughs> so there we go. I probably dropped him back in the water, but I caught one. So we got a we got a little dink in the boat, and uh, that just shows I can actually technically catch a bass. The catch is a catch. Ah, the yellow perch. Oh, well, that's a nice yellow perch. Yeah. yeah. He just peeped up that uh, little uh, baby baby fish here. Oh, oh. You're using uh, something similar, right? Yeah, I'm going to unbind this one too. We're here on one of the tributaries of the Potomac River, just 20 miles downstream from the nation's capital. The Potomac River is a very developed area here on the East Coast, but it's a fabulous fishery. It's got lots of largemouth bass, big blue catfish, there's lots of carp. Even upstream, there's some good smallmouth bass fishing. If you're ever out in the nation's capital, might want to do something a little outside the box and come fish in the Potomac. We found out what we had to do uh, prank it. video. I mean, it doesn't get you. You get throwing these things, you get feeling the rhythm of the lure. And when you feel something different, definitely check your lure because you'll get a little, little snarred up on itself and then it won't swim properly. Well, we hit that pretty hard. We're going to go switch spots and uh, see if we can't produce some more fish. All right, we're switching back to the poppin' frog and we're gonna be throwing under some submerged lily pads. This is a tidal river and the tide is high today. So the lily pads are underwater. So that makes kind of a unique environment. And we're gonna see if we can't get a, a bass to blow up on this frog. The grass flat, it's all through here. All right, let me show you this frog we're using. This is made by Spro. And it's a rubber uh, frog, you know, nice and buoyant there. And you can see it's it's weedless, like almost any good frog is. Points here are bent up and close against the body, so when the fish bites it, it'll get them. But when you're dragging it through the pads, they don't get snagged up. And it's got these little little tassels here, and it's got the cup on the mouth that makes that nice splashing plunk sound when you drag it through the water. You've got to watch that occasionally these things get chewed up, and they get holes in them, and they fill up with water, and then they don't they don't float as well. I mean, classic lure. Top water frogs, man. They would hit that thing. I think he's big. Yeah, he's acting a little heftier. Yeah, he's I think we may have a snake. All right. All right, guys, check this out. Northern snakehead right here. All right, guys, so this is a northern snakehead, and they're an invasive species here from Asia. And they are a load of fun to catch and they are one of the most delicious freshwater fish ever. It's like salmon, snakehead in my book. And they're also an extremely popular game fish over in Asia. In Japan, it's like largemouth bass and snakehead are just way up there for popularity. Virginia and the DC metro area has the best snakehead fishery in the world. The world record snakehead, had, uh, which came out of Japan, for that record stood for several decades got broke a few years back here in Virginia and they got broke again. So consistently we're putting up the biggest snakeheads and we have huge numbers here. So it's, it's kind of one of those problems. It also has some really big silver linings. A fishing game has asked us not to release these. So uh, this one's this one's staying, staying with us. But they have sharp teeth, so don't go lipping them like a bass. Many, many bowfin have died because people thought they were a snakehead, right? Bowfin look a lot like snakeheads from the back end, but the way you tell is this right here, the anal fin. With snakeheads, they have a huge, long anal fin. Bowfin have this teeny tiny little, little dinky anal fin. So if the anal fin is long, snakehead. If it's not, it's a bowfin. And in Japan, that would be considered a very nice snakehead. Here, uh, here that's, I'm average a little below average yeah i think six to eight pounds seems to be what i've i've seen if you want to see me cooking snakeheads and some snakehead recipes i'll put links in the description i've got lots of videos on that and later this week i'm actually going to do some spear fishing for snakeheads and a fishing for snakeheads with live bait so we're gonna be uh we're gonna be doing some snakehead fishing this week That's a trick. well you see what he did to the treble hook it's now a double hook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's buried down in there too. That smacks the snakehead there. And a trip. 
There, there we go. Slightly small, about a two and a half pounder, two, two and a half pounder. Yeah, there we go. Those snakeheads are kind of cool. They'll just hide down in the grass, just slither out, hit that, right back down. There we go. Look at the colors on those things. Yeah, the only ones. He's got some definite fangs. Well, now check it out. See how we're not right up on the edge of the lily pads? You know, picking your distance is important. If you get too close to where you're fishing, you're going to scare the fish away. Obviously, too far away, you can't cast effectively. So, keeping that, keeping your distancing right, is really important. All right, we hit this creek pretty good. We're going to go try another spot. See what happens. All right, we're gonna go hit one more spot. See if we can't pull one out at the last minute here. Repair, 60 bucks for a brand new one, you know. It's the morning spent, the sun's come out, it's heating up, it's time to call it. So we're gonna head back to the dock. Fisher report, or what he says. <laughs> well, thanks, it's thanks George, pleasure. it was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed, it. good day. Well, that was fun to try something new. I do a lot of catfish and carp fishing, mostly because I have small kids. I like to fish with my sons. It's something I do to bond with them and they're not old enough to really do lure fishing well and, and it's so much easier to put the rod in a rod holder and bait fish when i've got my kids with me but uh this guide service you know starts at 7 a.m and so my kids have only been awake for a couple hours and won't miss me if i duck out and go do a little early morning fishing for four hours so you know these these types of charters are pretty affordable and it's something you can do in three four hours on a morning you know go up late to work or something hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of video if you want to see more videos about bass fishing from the catfish and carp youtube channel i'll put links in the description to my uh trip down to florida fishing the okeechobee and some of my other videos as well but don't forget to click subscribe we put out new videos every saturday morning see you guys next saturday